No races and certainly, certainly not the high jump, although the idea of a jumping snail is actually relatively amusing. We do indeed have probably one of the slowest creatures that we could see on Juma in the form of a relatively small snail. I don't think this is a giant land snail. Obviously, it's very, it could be a very small giant land snail, but I don't think that it is. I think this is a different species. There's something about the colour of it and the colour of its shell, and the shape of its shell, actually, come to think of it, that to me does not put me in mind of a giant land snail. I think this is a different snail. As to which different snail, it's difficult to say exactly. Last year, Steph and myself kept ourselves entertained by trying to figure out which particular species of snail it was that we were seeing everywhere. Eventually discovered that it was an exotic species. I'm wondering if this is not the same. And it's interesting how you get population, I wouldn't call it a population explosion per se, but you get different species of snail appearing in different years. So I have not seen this year, I have not seen one of those snails that Steph and myself spent a very long time trying to identify. And this one, I don't think you're a land snail. I wonder if you're an exotic. Are you an exotic? Are you exotic? No answer. Can I see your papers, please? Oh, wonderful! Hannah, you say that this is your first bushwalk. Allow me to... hold on a second. Respond to you properly. Hannah, I'm thrilled to hear that this is your first bushwalk and that you're very, very excited. I would love to actually physically take you on a bushwalk, but this is the next best thing. And as I said earlier, it does give us a really lovely opportunity to get down and dirty, so to speak, with the smaller things that we see out here. And the wonderful thing, of course, is that the camera can bring you detail that is truly extraordinary, like the snail and the way that it moves across the ground and leaves a relatively non-existent slime trail. What always fascinates me about them, and it used to as a child as well, is those amazing, amazing extensions with the eye on the end of them. I didn't touch them. It was just the presence of my fingers that sent them retracting in. And I'd love to know about the muscular structure within those extensions on the top of its head, with its eyes on the end. Imagine if we could do that. And stick our eyes right out and then pull them back in. It's really weird. The, long, the more you think about it, the weirder it is. Here he goes. And welcome to Lightning Guy. It's lovely to have you, Lightning Guy. I should probably sit up now, although I have to say this is a very comfortable position I found myself on the ground. Lightning Guy, you want to know if snails could basically work like hermit crabs that they could change shells at will? And the answer is no. They are very much attached to their shells, not just in an emotional sense, but in a physical sense as well. And the way that the shell is produced, hermit crabs move from shell to shell without actually making the shell itself. So they will go and steal an empty shell, or sort of usurp an empty shell, and move in there. Whereas for snails, they produce their own shell through excreting from their epidermis inside they secrete a concentration of proteins and polysaccharides that basically form crystals that then form the shape of the shell itself and there's all kinds of studies if you are interested in that sort of thing or if you're mathematically inclined there's all sorts of studies that have been done and research that's been done about the conditions that make for the production of a shell what the snail eats, what the shape of the snail is, and there's all sorts of ratios. Obviously there's the famous, um, what's it called, that spiral? <laughs> the spiral, the famous spiral, you know what I mean. Um, obviously there's that to it, but there's ratios of uh, the aperture, the opening of the shell, the length of the shell and the spiral, the tightness of the coils. It's fascinating if you're interested in reading up on that sort of thing. It's a little complex, and I have to confess to not fully understanding it myself. But it is a true magic piece of work of nature.
Now remember that its body is ex ex sort of extended into that shell and attached to the inside. And Megan, you say that there's something pulsing inside its shell. Well, I'm going to hazard a guess and say that that is the heartbeat of the snail. And I wish I had a torch with me because we could actually shine it through. Next time I must remember to do that, next time I see a snail. We could shine it through and have a look at the anatomy and the structure of this particular snail. So that pulse will be its heartbeat. Oh, I'm really curious to know how fast a snail's heart beats, because I've got no idea.